At this time, the American colonists and the British were becoming very close to war, and this section is called The Road to Lexington and Concord, and we're going to see about the tensions between Britain and the colonies and how it leads to armed conflict. Britain was really angry about the Boston Tea Party, and so they passed these acts designed to punish the Americans, and the Americans called these the intolerable acts. So intolerable means something you just can't stand. I was in 1774, and the intolerable acts included that the port of Boston was going to be closed until the colonists paid for the tea that they destroyed, and so that was going to be really um, damaging to the Americans to have the port closed because that was a major port. It banned the committees of correspondence, and if you remember from the last section, that was what the Americans were using to kind of communicate with each other and make sure that everybody was on the same page. Uh, the Intolerable Acts also required uh, that the Americans would house the troops whenever necessary or wherever necessary. Uh, so it allowed Britain to house their troops wherever they wanted. It also allowed the British officials who were accused of crimes to stand trial in Britain. So if there was a British official who got in trouble for something, they could go back to Britain for the trial rather than being tried in America. So in 1774, uh, the First Continental Congress met, and so they were trying to decide what to do. And so these were delegates from the different colonies, and they voted to ban trade with Britain until the intolerable acts were uh, repealed. So until um, Britain said, okay, we're not going to enforce the intolerable acts and we'll revoke them, they said, we won't trade with you anymore, so Britain would lose money. The First Continental Congress also called on each colony to begin training troops, so to get their troops ready for fighting in case that would happen. And by insisting on the rights of the colonies, these delegates at the First Continental Congress began to plant the idea, the seeds of independence. So the colonists hoped that this boycott or refusal to trade would force Britain to repeal the Intolerable Acts. However, Britain did not repeal them and instead sent more troops to enforce their will. Uh, some colonists prepared to fight, and the colonial troops continued to train to get ready for war. Now, I'm sure you've heard of Paul Revere. Um, there was a spy network, a colonial spy network, so people from the colonies, that were watching over, seeing what the British were doing. The British troops... Uh, were sent to arrest Sam Adams and John Hancock in Lexington. The British also planned to destroy a militia supply of ammunition in Concord. So a militia is um, a group of regular citizens who are trained to fight or who are willing and able to fight, and they had a supply of ammunition in Concord, and the British planned to destroy that. So Paul Revere and William Dawes and Samuel Prescott and some other people, the most famous one is Paul Revere, um, spread the news that this is what was going on. In 1775, on April 19th, the British troops arrived at Lexington to fight the militiamen. Now, one-third of these militia were called Minutemen, and they were trained to act at a minute's notice. The troops uh, fought the militiamen at Concord, um, and there, there was a lot going on, and um, I'll have you look at an animation later, but eventually they were forced to retreat. Lexington and Concord were the first battles of the Revolutionary War, and just a couple terms for you to know, loyalists, that's the name for those who support the British, and patriots is the name for those who support the rebels.